So you've already seen part one where I show you exactly how to install this iDoing Android head unit. And in this video, I'm gonna dig into the operating system and I'm gonna show you how to establish proper connections and walk you through all of its features. So the head unit is on and I wanna give you a quick walkthrough of what you're seeing here. There's a built-in microphone right there, a reset button right there. So if the unit freezes for whatever reason, just like your phone or other electronics, you can use that to do a hard reset. There's a power button right there. Although the power button uh, actually is a mute button. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be that way or not, but that's what it does. Not a big deal because if you scroll down, there's an off screen button right there that you could hit that turns off the screen if you just wanted to turn off the screen while leaving the stereo running. You're gonna have a home button right below that. The home button's gonna take you back to that main screen that we were just at from wherever you're at on the head units. There's a back button, so that's a navigational button that you're gonna use to go back to your previous screen. And of course, your volume up, volume down. If you scroll down from the top, you're gonna see the menu just like you do on your phone. So you can kind of look and see what, uh, what's available on there. And if you hit this right here, it's gonna take you to all of the screens that you have open, all of the apps that you have open. And you can scroll through those just like your phone and pick them or close them or do whatever you wanna do. So I'm gonna hit back right there. Now, I already have a thumb drive connected to the USB port. So what you're gonna see down here are the files in the thumb drive. This bottom left icon right here will take you to any videos that you have in the device or in the thumb drive. So I'm gonna hit that. And that's like a Michael Jackson video that I have in there for an example. You could scroll through that, let it play, or skip it to the next video, do whatever you wanna do. This button right here is your menu settings for your sound. This is gonna allow you to customize your sound. I'm gonna dig into this in a minute. So I'm gonna back out of there. So just like your phone, you have a lot of applications here that you can get. So you can actually go to say the Play Store. So let me go to the Play Store real quick and get apps for the head unit. Now, just like any phone or any tablet, it's not gonna support every app. So you have to play around. So don't, don't be surprised if you can't use an app or whatever, because that's actually the case for any device. So, and of course you're gonna to have to log into the Play Store just like your maps and just like anything else on Google, you have to have an account. So don't be surprised when you get prompted to do that. You have an icon for all of your settings right there. And just like your phone, you have a My Files that you can hit and it allows you to scroll through the files. Now this is an Android head unit, so it does have built-in memory. It's got 64 gigabytes of memory. So if I go to internal, it's, it's gonna show me what's inside the head unit. So this is all the files that's in there. And if I go to USB 4, that's gonna show you the thumb drive that I have plugged into it. So you can see right there, I have music. You can see my logo. So if I click on my logo, it'll show up my logo. From here, I can actually take the logo and set it as my uh, screensaver. So you see now that my logo is my background. However, it's white and the icons down here are white. So um, that kind of screws things up. To change it, you're gonna long press on the background, then you're gonna hit wallpapers. Then I'm gonna go to wallpapers and just pick one. And I'm gonna go up here to set wallpaper. That's it. So let me go back to my files. So if I go to USB 4, it takes you to my thumb drive and I can hit music. And this, these are all the playlists that I have in that particular thumb drive. So let's say I wanna go to 90 CD1. The, this, these are all the files that are in there and I can pick one and start playing it and it'll start playing and then from here of course you can you know randomize it or hit the next track and play the play the whole playlist um, just like you would any other media player so very quickly the main icons right here i don't know if you can change these icons i looked around i tried i tried messing with it i tried to uh, see if i can change them and i couldn't figure out how to do it so if somebody knows how to do it please tell me i don't know how to do it the unit does have different launchers like you see here that allow you to change the display to your preference the navigational button here on the left, you could actually set whatever GPS that you prefer to use through that. Now, that right there is going to be within the head unit, so that's not Android Auto. So if I hit navigation, it's gonna take you to Google Maps, which is what I actually selected as my favorite GPS, right? So from here, you could actually navigate just like you would with any other device that has Google Maps. So you can search for whatever, find it and then navigate to it and it'll give you uh, turn by turn directions to get to that point. So that's kind of cool because let's say your Android Auto is giving you a hard time, not working for whatever reason, you could actually navigate just from the head unit by using that. So let me go back. If you go to radio, it's gonna take you to FM, AM radio. I'm not gonna dig in through that because every radio has had FM, AM forever. So it has all the features that any other radio with FM and AM has. Let me back out of there. 
the middle there is just informational, gives you the time. If you click on it, you could actually select your time zone and all that. It's not a big deal. You can kind of look into that yourself when you have the head unit. Music will take you to whatever source was playing last. It's going to take me to the thumb drive, the, the music that I was just playing that I showed you. So there it is. And then from here, you can, you can leave it on the screen if you want and you can select whatever tracks you want or if your passenger wants to mess with it and wants to pick tracks while you're driving, you can do all that from here, randomize it, whatever you want to do. So hit back. Then Bluetooth is going to take you to your phone. From here, you can also hit that little music icon right there and play whatever is on your phone. In other words, you're changing the source to Bluetooth. So if you have tracks on your phone that you're playing, or if you have Pandora or something like that on your phone, then this is how you get to it right there. There's a lot of stuff to explore here. One thing that you're gonna wanna do right away is right here, this, that control icon right there on the bottom left, if you hit it, it's gonna take you to setting your steering wheel controls. So setting the steering wheel buttons is super easy. All you do is press the button that you're interested in programming and leave it pushed. And then on the screen, hit the button that you want it to correspond to, to that particular button that you're hitting. Once you hit it, that's it. You let it go and move on to the next one. And then you do all the buttons on that side and then you're done. Now, you don't even have to do the buttons that they are assigned to because you could actually change it and do something else. If you want the volume up to bring up FM, you could do that. Of course, the best thing you could do is just make it correspond to the factory settings. So once you're done, you're going to hit that uh, OK button and that's it those are all going to be programmed and it should work just fine so at this point i already have my phone fully connected to the head unit and it is connected to my phone's mobile hotspot and that's why all of these features work i'm going to show you exactly how to do that in a sec i just want to run through this walkthrough first so as long as you have the head unit connected to your wi-fi hotspot or if you have a sim card in it with internet service uh, if you're sitting in a parking lot you want to you know browse the internet you can hit chrome and you can browse the internet just like any phone or tablet or whatnot same thing if you were sitting at a parking lot and you wanted to watch YouTube, you could hit YouTube and it's going to bring up YouTube and uh, it's asking me to update. I'm not going to update it right now, but you get the point. It'll bring up YouTube and just like your phone, you can watch YouTube right on it. So there's a lot there to explore. But at the end of the day, a sound system is just that, a sound system. So how does this head unit perform when it comes to sound quality and customization? So let me show you the customization options. If you hit equalizer right there, it's going to bring you to the equalizer. Now, the stock head unit in these cars has a three band equalizer, lows, mids and highs. This head unit has a 16 band equalizer. That's more than even other manufacturers. They're usually seven to 13. This is an actual 16 band equalizer. If you hit setup up here, you can actually do two 16 band equalizers, one for the front right here. And then if you swipe, it's gonna be one for the rear. So you can independently set up the equalizer. And that's actually a very neat feature. So I'm gonna put it back to off. Loudness is gonna compensate for the volume of the road noise. So of course you have your predefined settings over here. So you can just click on whatever sounds the best to you and kind of customize it from that point. If we go to field right here, you it's your basic fade and balance. Not much to talk about there. Surround is gonna give you the ability to, to give you the effect of surround sound. I need to mess with this a little bit more, but it does have a very substantial effect. If you turn that up, you can actually feel like the music is surrounding you. So it's a neat feature that it's there. I'm gonna mess with it a little bit more to see what works and what doesn't. And of course you can turn that on or off right there. So I'll leave it on. Uh, if you go to bass enhancement, this right here is just gonna enhance the bass. It's basically a, a bass booster. I've, I've never been a fan of them. I turned it on and just like any other bass booster, I turned it right back off because I feel like it's cleaner without it. So it's up to you. You can go ahead and turn it on and off and experiment to whatever sounds best to you. If it hits subwoofer up here, you have the ability to turn the volume up or down and then to set your crossovers on the high and low end for the subwoofer. So back out of there and then you have bass filter right here. So this right here is basically your crossover for your low end on the interior speakers. Again, this is something that you're gonna have to mess with. Personally, I think it overcompensates a little bit and even turning it up just a little bit really cuts out way too much of the low frequencies. So it's best to leave it the way that it is like that. You can experiment yourself and see, but I would recommend just leaving it exactly like that. I was actually pretty pleased with the sound quality. If you mess with the settings and turn off all the extra stuff, you can get pretty good sound out of the unit. That said, I do have speakers installed that are far, far superior to the stock ones. You can see here that even without a subwoofer, this head unit and those speakers put out some car rattling bass. 
Regarding how much improvement you will get, that will depend on the speakers you have, the music you listen to, and how you customize your settings. I think most will be pleased with the difference. That said, I will be relieving the head unit of internal amplification duties and will be installing a high quality, more powerful inline amp to drive my inside speakers. So you notice this little bubble right here, you could actually drag that to wherever you want on the screen. And when you hit it, no matter where you're at, it's gonna bring you to this like basic menu right here, which can take you to the home screen. It could take you to your apps right here. It's just an easy way to, to get to the main menu without getting kind of lost. Okay, so I'm gonna show you real quick how to set up Bluetooth because it could get kind of screwy. And if you miss a critical step, Android Auto is not going to work. So we're at the main screen, I'm gonna hit Bluetooth. Then I'm going to go to the connections. It's already on connections. Of course, just like any other device, you're going to go to your Bluetooth settings and your phone or device is going to scan. Okay, so these are the ones that I found. SYU Android is what we're looking for. So I'm going to hit that. It's going to say pairing and ask you for a pin. Okay, the pin is 0000. And then you're going to hit pair and just wait for it to pair. It's only going to take a second. Allow access to your contacts and then you're gonna see the pair device right up here. Here's the step that, uh, that's critical. Right now, it's linked to CarLink, and you can see that because of that little, that little chain right there that you can see. If it didn't show that, so I'm gonna disconnect it so that you see what it would look like. I'm gonna select it, okay, there we go. It's disconnected. See, see how it doesn't have that link anymore? If it doesn't show that like that, Android Auto is not gonna work. So if that's the case, all you have to do is select it. So like mine selected right there, and hit link and then it's going to take you through the linking process it's going to take a few seconds and then, it's, then it's going to say connected and it's going to be good to go so now as far as bluetooth goes android auto should work just fine all right so there's one more thing that we have to do in order to get android auto to work we're halfway there when you first get the head unit right now i have my mobile hotspot connected to the head unit that's why it has service so what we have to do is create a network in the head unit and then connect our phones to that network. And once we do that, we only have to do that once and then the phone will do it automatically in the future. So in order to do that, what we're going to do, we're going to go to settings. Okay. We're going to go to WLAN, hit more. Right here, you're going to see an option for hotspot and tethering. We're going to hit that right there. And then we're going to hit Wi-Fi hotspot. All right. This is where you turn on that particular network that I was just talking about. So the hotspot name right there, you can see it, Carlink AP303. Right now it's off, so all I'm gonna do is hit that to turn it on, and now it's on. So now the head unit is broadcasting a network that we can log into with our cell phone. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna go to uh, my Wi-Fi settings on my phone, and it's already connected because I've already done it, but it's just like any other Wi-Fi network. You simply hit the hit the network and you connect to it and then you enter the password. So the password is going to be right there, hotspot password. You click on that, it'll show you what the password is. So if ironically Android Auto doesn't come up automatically, you're going to go right here to Carlink 2.0 and click on that. And it should connect to the phone now that the Bluetooth and the wireless are playing and bring up Android Auto. And now we're connected to Android Auto wirelessly. So just like any other device, uh, you can manipulate it and use it to your liking. From here, you can play music from within Android Auto, do whatever you want. You don't even have to do that. If you don't want to listen to the music in Android Auto, you can go back and play the music that's already in your thumb drive or wherever else, and then go back to Android Auto. So very neat. From this point forward, every time that you come into the car, all you'll have to do, if it doesn't come up automatically, all you'll have to do is go and hit that car link i've had to do that i've had a couple of issues I've, I've turned this android auto on and off a few times and sometimes it gets hung up but i don't think that's a head unit i actually think that's the phone because i had the same issues with my stock head unit with this new phone that i have and then my last phone i never had a single issue so i think that my phone is just screwy so your mileage may vary depending on what phone you have just keep that in mind you might have to you know experiment a little bit but this is the basics of how you get android auto to work right off the bat. CarPlay, I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't own any Apple devices, so I can't help you with that. But this is uh, an Android head unit. So that's how you get an Android device to connect to wireless Android Auto. 
on the iDo and Android head unit. I'm about to go over a few basic settings. My only recommendation is that you should be careful messing with these settings. This is for the most part like an unlocked phone. So only change stuff you feel comfortable with. And if you don't do some research first, you can ultimately set it back to default if you do end up messing things up, but that's something you probably don't want to deal with. But I'll run through a few of the basic safe settings. Last thing I wanna show you is the settings. I'm not gonna go over every setting because there's a lot there to dig through. If you go to general, um, there's a lot of little things here that you can and you should change. So some of this stuff is like common sense. Mute audio when reversing, you know, obviously you want that or if you don't want that, then you can turn it off. Um, you can kind of look through and see that the stuff that makes sense to you to, to change. WLAN, if you go to more, that's what allows you to turn on the hotspot that you're gonna need for Android Auto. So that's an important one to know. And also if you want to use your hotspot, mobile hotspot from your phone, then you have to go here and you have to turn Wi-Fi back on. So you hit use Wi-Fi and it turns Wi-Fi back on so that you can connect the head unit to your phone. Under device, you have sound and it's gonna take you to a few basic sound settings that you can experiment with. Power conditioning is the gain of your system. I don't know why they call it that. You're gonna to wanna to leave it at 60. Subwoofer again, takes you back to your subwoofer settings. Under general, if you go to Navi app, navigation app, and you hit that, you can select what navigation you want. That's what I was talking about earlier. If you go to user, you can add or delete Google or Android accounts from right here. And system takes you to some higher level informational stuff for people who really know what they're doing. So those are your basic settings. You can kind of mess with them and see, um, see what you want to change and what you don't. So if at any point you have any issues with a head unit, just like your phone, what do you do with your phone when you have an issue? You restart your phone. So you do the same thing with the head unit. You swipe down and then you go to reboot up here. And then it's gonna, are you sure you want to restart? Sure. And it'll restart the head unit if you want to do that. Obviously the head unit loses power whenever you turn off your car. So it, it's essentially restarting every time you turn off your car. So you shouldn't have the, the kinds of issues that we have with the phones where we have to restart them every week because you're restarting it every time that you shut off your car. Last thing I forgot to mention, you can make screens just like your phone. You can have several screens and then you can tailor them however you want. You can go here and then long press on an app and then throw it wherever you want on there so that it's readily available. So if you swipe, it could be all your favorite apps right there. And if you long press on it, you can set your wallpapers from here or you can add widgets to whatever screen you want, just like your phone. So if you're wondering, the car stock backup camera worked perfectly from the moment I installed it. Aside from what I showed you, there are accessories that can expand the unit's functionality from a Bluetooth OBD adapter that allows you to display gauges right on the head unit to a dash cam with driver assist features. I'm personally not interested in any of this, but wanted to mention it for anyone who might be. Since I only just got this head unit, I will continue to dig into it and I'll put out an updated long-term review in the future, as well as update you guys once I install my two amplifiers to the system. You really can't deny the value in these head units and there's a lot to like, but if I'm being picky, there's a few things that I would improve. I feel like the bezel could have been stronger. As it is, it could easily break upon installation if you're not being careful. I am a big fan of the tactile feeling of buttons, so I am always disappointed when electronics use soft buttons, and maybe this can be added in the future, but I would like to see a gesture for volume so that you can quickly turn the volume down without using the mute button. All that said, the unit is designed well and provides a huge value to WRX and STI owners because it is plug and play. So for the most part, you are probably going to find this head unit very intuitive because a lot of this stuff is what we do on a daily basis with our phones. So you're gonna feel right at home. And by the same token, if you feel that your Android phone overwhelms you, then you might want to think twice because it's a very similar experience. This unit has a ton of features that I've yet to go over everything that it's capable of doing. If you came across this video first, check out part one where I go over the installation in clear detail. Even though I try to anticipate questions, if you still have one lingering, put it in the comment section. Don't forget to like and share this video if you found it useful. And if you are not yet subscribed, I invite you to do so. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next video. Take care.